we are giving everybody a little walk through fashion doll history here and there. And you can put it in the comments what we've missed. But Free I love and peace, man. Uh, mesmerized by this doll, pulling her string, watching her eyes change. You know? Light up eyes that are not going to scare the little girls. <laughs> no, oh they're, they're very cute. They're not my thing at all. <laughs> what? is this doll. What is there to say about Dusty? So, the mask uh, I think is quite iconic. Well, she needed something. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> All beautiful things, 1978. No, just yeah. <laughs> Mattel continues to bring us weird products and in 1980, we get gorgeous creatures. These dolls are fashion doll animals. So they were a step ahead of the furries. Um, they, they knew what they were doing, but it wasn't flying back then. They're kind of short, stubby uh, fashion dolls that their torso is the exact same size as a Barbie. So you can actually put their clothing right on a Barbie doll and it fits perfectly. They're so weird, you know, they're so, so out there. Beautifully sculpted corset um, on their torso. And I've always wanted to just like, hand paint uh, the corset on their body to catch all that detail and and because it really was a beautiful sculpt, weirdly enough. Their jewelry and their shoes were identical to Barbie's. The one that's in blue, and I think it's the horse, um, it has blue strap, uh, superstar strap shoes that are the same that uh, fashion photo PJ wore. Um, oh, so, that's so but, interesting. I, I'm gonna look these up when I get off yeah, there. Um, they actually have a kind of like um, Muppets vibe. Oh yeah, the pig, uh, <laughs> yeah. Princess Pig is Miss Piggy to me yeah. all the way. I was like, as a kid, I was like, oh, it's a Miss Piggy doll, you know? For 81, we got Migos Jordash. The Jordash brand and the Jordash dolls were all over the place. Yeah, I, I thought that the Jordash dolls were very cute. I liked them because I liked the candies. Mm -hmm. 81. We had Glamour Gals by Kenner, which were tiny, tiny little fashion dolls. And um, I loved them. I remember I was so little. I, I must have been like five or something when I wasn't even five. I was like four, somewhere in there. But I remember seeing the commercial. Um, and I remember just being like, oh, like, uh, you know, these little glamour gals. Anyway, they had like, their case was like, it had this revolving like mall door on the side of the case so you could strap them in and revolve the door. And uh, they, they were, they had a yacht. They had like a wow. play set that was a yacht and it's gigantic. <laughs> but because dolls were so small, they could do this big play set that was gigantic to the dolls. But um, I, there's something about the 80s and huge play sets, like huge houses, huge play sets. These days, nobody has the room. Could you imagine like living in a time where your little girl had a bedroom big enough to have the A-frame Barbie dream mm -hmm. house? Like it's like, and then of course, Mattel. They smelled that this line was something was happening and that they were like making money. And so Mattel came out with Dazzle, which is the same size uh, as a glamour gal conveniently. Yeah. And um, they were basically mini Barbies and they're very cute. And the artwork on their packages is Mattel's gorgeous superstar artwork. And they are, they're beautiful, but they're a copy. Also 81 is the magical year that Takara got the license to make Barbie. Uh, from what I understand, Barbie had a test market in Japan where a lot of superstar Barbies, they were boxed in other superstar fashions and they were kind of test marketed in Japan. And those dolls are still around. You can find them and buy them, um, but they were a fail. The Japanese people did not want Barbie. They thought she was too garish. They thought they didn't connect with her. They didn't necessarily want their children playing with her. And so Mattel got together with a local company, Takara, to make a doll specifically just designed for the Japanese people. When I was a little boy, little gay boy, <laughs> many moons ago, um, I had uh, one of my best friends, Beanie, who's Vietnamese, and he had this um, Com big thick comic book that read backwards to me as an American and, and everything. And, um, but in the back of the magazine were like toy advertisements. And there was an advertisement for this Takara Barbie. And I was 
hooked. I was like, I was so in love with what I saw in this magazine. And of course, it'd be years before I'd have one in person or whatnot. But as a kid seeing that, and it wasn't available in our country, you know, and we didn't have eBay or these things, you know, and I, and so I didn't see one in person till I think I was like, 18 at a doll show, you know, and and um, and then I just went mad. And since I have a huge collection now of specifically um, Takara Barbie era, not Jenny, but the actual Barbie era. Um, and so what's interesting too about this is like we were talking about Lady Maria, um, the body is very much, it's Francie. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's re-sculpt, but it's Francie. Within the same year, um, they changed the body to give her like a tiny little waist and she didn't have mm. the, the square hips anymore. Um, and then that's the body they still use today. And there was a small period of time, and I think it's the square hip time, that they actually had click knees instead of oh. bendy knees. I'm in love with them. I still am today. I think that they're some of the most beautiful quality. Um, I love the anime faces. Um, I, they're just sweet, you know, yeah. they're really sweet and they still are super fashionable. And uh, Takara has the most <clears throat> amazing quality hair. Um, they're just, they're very beautiful dolls. So, yeah. yeah. Like I think that, it, and even Ollie thinks this too when he sees them, they're kind of timeless. Like they could they be are, made today I mean, and still sell. So this girl is in a vintage uh, Takara Barbie outfit, but the um, the girl is brand new from Leica Castle, and I actually mm. just got her in the mail <laughs> today. That's why she's here. Um, and they use uh, she's you know they call her the original Jenny, but she's the original Barbie and Barbie sculpt. Um, but they uh, they use the same screening, the same sculpt and everything. And but she's brand new from Leica Castle. Mm. Um, but she looks oops, she looks the same as uh, yeah. so yeah. Except for this one has green in her hair, and yes. I had to have that <laughs> because this outfit yeah. has yeah. this like neon green belt, and I was like, oh, it's perfect. Star came out in 1981. And oh, yeah. she is, I think that uh, it's so weird when a company that already has a fashion doll comes out with another fashion doll line because they're trying to, I guess, capture more of the market that they weren't able to capture with Barbie. So they come out with Star, which is more of the real teenage girl, I guess. Every time I think of Star, for some reason, I think of the movie Carrie, the original movie Carrie, because the girls that are like uh, the bratty teen girls mm -hmm. and stuff that are surrounding Carrie in that movie look like stars yes. um you know we've got the like the hair that's flicked down the middle but then super curly and up and pooped out on the sides and the and wearing visors and sunglasses and just very much like that feel you know um and i think the star line is very cute um i i like them i her friend tracy i don't know what the sculptors were thinking because she's got the weirdest smiley, horrible sculpt mouth. Uh, years later, Jazzy's friend line used it for a Chelsea doll. It's it's terrible mold. <laughs> but anyways, their shoulders, they had this weird like joint where it was like kind of like beauty secrets where they could like go up, um, but mm. there wasn't a button or anything on the back. They were just kind of like jointed like that, which I thought was very interesting. Um, I had a friend that when they played with them, like they would act like they were in school and they'd be like, I don't know, you know, they shrug <laughs> their shoulders. Their feet actually had a joint so that they could wear a high heel or they could wear a flat, um, which was very interesting because it was a click joint, much like the bend joint in a knee, yeah. uh, but it was in the foot, which um, I think Living Barbie did yes, uh, yeah. in like 1970. 81, Sergio, I, I don't know if I'm gonna butcher this name, um, is it like <laughs> Valente, Sergio I Valente? think so. Yeah, that's what um, I'd say. I remember seeing them in stores when I was very little. Um, and I, so I know, I know that they were a European thing and I think an Italian thing. They're really cool. The boy fashion dolls of them are very interesting. I think they have like painted mustaches or something. Um, and 
they are, but they very much kind of fell into candy or any of those other dolls for me. And they were, these specific dolls are kind of forgettable to me. The fashions look quite good, but they are a bit, yeah. um, they don't have enough of a fantasy element to them, right. think, which I think is important with kids' toys to a degree. I do too, I do yeah. too. And then we have uh, the Mademoiselle Eugene doll by the Eugene Company. Um, and funny, I just found one in the thrift store uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and they actually are, weirdly enough, pretty quality. Um, they're still definitely a little cheaper than Barbie. In 82, we got LGN or LJN's uh, Brooke Shields stone. I want one so um, bad. <laughs> she is, so I have the sun, I have like the suntan beach mm. one. She's my favorite. Um, but these dolls were quality, they were gorgeous, and they were so rivaling Barbie. They were so, every little girl wanted a Brooke Shields doll. And I think the same company did um, Boy George. Yeah. 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 Um, and he was very popular here. I see him all the time. 1982, also we got the Betty Teen, the Tong, um, oh, yes. the Julia, the Susanna, if you were um, Greek. They all used the same face molds. They all came out the same year. Uh, just these different versions of this. Uh, I knew her as the Tong doll. Um, yeah. And um, she is, the way that I knew her always was the very cutesy, cheeky face with like super, that like almost mullety style, yes. the like curly bangs and then curly, yeah. That's um, how I remember her, because she she was big when I was a kid, but I never got her. I got the furniture and all that. I had like a big pink piano and all that. And I would have her with the mullet on the box and Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think she she's an iconic doll from a lot of people. A lot of people, yeah. yeah. Especially people in Europe. So yeah. she must have been like you know, really around. Um, the doll that was popular here, besides Barbie, that came onto the market was Creata's Flower Princess. Um, and Creata, um, they continued making dolls. I, they'll be on this list further on with their different dolls, but Creata uh, was a very quality company and their sculpts were beautiful. They did beautiful dolls. Um, I, I, Their face screenings, were beautiful. Their art rivaled Barbie's art and was gorgeous. Um, I think that they scared Mattel a little bit. I think that they came in and then Mattel didn't know what was going on. And here's this other fashion doll that's just as quality and was beautiful. And in the same year, we get this really weird thing by Kenner, which falls into the whole simplicity doll and all of that, the fashions by me. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the weird thing that I don't, I still to this day do not understand how this happened. But we have um, Darcy that comes yeah. out uh, by Kenner. And then we have, you know, a few years later, we have Kenner's, uh, or excuse me, Hasbro's Fashions by Me, which is, looks just like a Darcy doll and is the same exact size, but is, uh, um, is not, you know, by the same company. And then when they made Jem, she's the same mm. size as Darcy, the same type and everything, but it's made by Hasbro, not Kenner. And Kenner was still a company at the time. So mm. I don't know if they were like, they really liked the Darcy doll and the company was like, well, Dar uh, we don't want Mattel to come after us or whatever. So we'll make it in this little bit larger size. I don't know why that weird thing happened, but... Yeah. I've just been collecting 90s action men from when I was a kid. Yeah. And I've gotten one with the Jidge um, logo on it, which is an Italian company. But that yeah. one came from France. And then I got one from America and it had the Kenner logo on it. And then yeah. I bought one here in Australia and it has the Hasbro logo on it and it's all the same That's time so and it's weird. the same product That's line but so it's different. That's so weird, yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I don't know what happened, but it's very, it's a little <laughs> weird intermingling. Very interesting. Um, and the Fashions by Me doll was beautiful, uh, a lot like Darcy, but she had 
Uh, her body was a mannequin and it had slits down the sides of the body and the arms uh, and a little tool and you would cut and shove the fabric into the slits to like create your different looks. And uh, it came with patterns to just cut the fabric in the right shapes for the dolls and stuff. Um, uh, the Vogue Glitter Girls by Lesney, um, 1982. And those were a little bit bigger than Glamour Gals, but they were still pretty tiny dolls. And I think they were really pretty. Um, their fashions were so simple they were literally just cut and not sewn ed edges out of metallic fabrics to make their dresses with the snap in the back so their clothing was very much lacking and very cheap but the dolls themselves i think were pretty and cute for the size and everything you know it's so hard to find like miss flair and sandy and these things it's hard to find information of like when they debuted but i have uh Totsy Sandy down for 83, even though I think she actually came out much earlier than that. Um, same with the Shillman, Young and Lovely. It was another mm -hmm. Miss Flair candy type. 85, which I'm gonna go back uh, where I skipped over, which is Shira by Mattel. Oh, um, and I, as a little kid, was since I was not really able to have Barbie, my brother had He-Man and I was allowed to have She-Ra dolls. So I had so many She-Ra dolls um, and, I, and I love her. Uh, to this day, I think that she was for the time like such a beautiful, uh, beautiful doll. Um, and they were small because they were meant to be like girls action figures basically. Um, but super glamorous and fantasy. And again, Mattel using that beautiful art that they used during that time. And um, they were really cool, but Technically, the Golden Girls were pre Shira, and Shira was kind of a copy of the Golden Girls. They were a very well thought out and very cool um, female action figure, but He Man was so huge, and with Shira's cartoon and with everything, they were going to win, hands down, yeah. you know? So then, oh yeah, oh my God, Hasbro's gem. Yes. Uh, 1985. So I was definitely a gem girl. Um, I was a little kid when the cartoon was airing and I was in love with gem. Uh, I gem, gem, gem all day long. Mm -hmm. I, I am still to this day love gem. Um, I have, um, I had a humongous vintage collection. Now I just have pieces that I loved that I kept, um, but I have a huge integrity gem collection with the new re-release of the doll, um, just because they're gorgeous and they're yeah, new they and they're very quality. Um, so, but gem will always have a huge part of my heart. And I am so, so it's hilarious to watch um, the Barbie documentary on Netflix, uh, The Toys That Made Us. It's hilarious to watch because I knew that all of this crap went down and it was shady. It was shady. Mm. And Mattel was able to find out through a toy rep what Hasbro was doing. And Mattel was able to copy them and have Barbie and the Rockers on the shelf before Jeff to make it look like they were the original, even though they totally stole it. I mean, it was like, and the woman that was in this whole thing on the Toys That Made Us interview, she is like gleaming and smile yes. from ear to ear. And she's like, and we would do it again. You know? And I'm like, this bitch, like what is going on? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sad because I do love Barbie, of course. And I love Barbie and the Rockers. I think they're gorgeous, but they were made to make the demise of Jem, but I love Jem. I just think, I think the quality of that doll was so good. Um, also, um, one thing that a lot of people don't know about or maybe don't think about is um, besides the cool light up earrings that Jem had, um, they actually were the first that I know of and the last, I don't think ever did it again, uh, to have a double click uh, knee joint. Um, so glitter and gold gem, just glitter and gold gem, 
um, her knee would not only click this way, but you could twist it and it would click the other way. Oh. So when she went to cross her legs, she could have her leg kicking out, she could, um, and it was so cool. And to this day, once in a while, I'll pick up my glitter and gold gem and I'll be like, click, 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 and I'll turn it the other way. And it's like such a satisfying like feeling because no other fashion doll does that, you know? I'm <laughs> hating myself right now. I never knew wow. that. I never knew oh, that. Yeah. And I had one. Yeah. I had one and yeah. she's gone now. <laughs> so yeah. I won't be able to do I mean, even the commercial said no one has moves like glitter and gold gem. Oh, and they were God. blind. Uh, Lucky Fashion Corner, oh. um, which was another clone, like Miss Flair type, but a little bit better quality. The Lucky was a bit better quality doll, but it was still a clone and not the best. But they they were on the market for a really long time mm. too, um, Fashion Corner was. Yeah, I had so many <laughs> fashions as a kid that had the little bunny now I look at them kind of nostalgically with their like really deep sunken in dimples and stuff. But I remember at the time just being like, ooh, who would play with that if you had Barbie, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I was an elitist, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then by Marty Toy, we had the Betty Boop doll um, in 1985, which was very cute. Um, and then in 86, Mattel took us to space once again, and we had Spectra. Her body was this like metallic metal looking, it was plastic, but it looked yeah. like a metallic metal in pink. I would have been 100% in love with these dolls if their face sculpts didn't look like they were fashion corner dolls. It actually reminds me of these hand-me-down dolls I had from my sisters called, um, Moon Dreamers, I think they were. Oh yeah, like little tiny, little tiny yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, I loved those things. But they remind those me of that. Those were also made by Hasbro, who did Gem, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Mattel did uh, Hot Looks. Yeah. Um, in 1986, which I remember very well when I was a kid. <laughs> a lot of girls in the neighborhood having those dolls. I remember the commercials. They very much, to me, they were very much. Um, again before your time, but they were very much like a punky Brewster. And I loved the fact that they had all these like bracelets and jelly shoes and, you know, they were just kind of like, to me, they were like, Gem was kind of the epitome of the 80s. Hot looks, their fashion and the what they were going for was very that time of the 80s for girls. But they were interesting because they had cloth bodies that were bendable um, and then the vinyl faces with rooted hair and they were big. Yeah, I had a couple of hand-me-down ones and I loved the earrings. I was obsessed with the yeah. earrings. I, I got one, but it's, again, big dolls. I don't have the room for them, so I gave it to my niece. Yeah. I love, you know, I, the fun part too about doll collecting is, you know, being able to experience these different dolls and it's okay to have phases and to let them go. You yeah. know, it's okay to have those experiences and enjoy those experiences and then move on. And we're adults we, and we don't have to hoard. Some of yeah. us do and some of us want to, <laughs> but we don't have to. We can enjoy them. You know, I went through a phase where I was buying maxi dolls because they were so affordable, um, but I could open up a box from, you know, 1987, 88 and smell that plastic yes. smell and like, <laughs> and experience opening a brand new doll from that era at a very affordable price. Do you know in my 500 years on this planet, how many rare dolls and whatever I have opened that I wish that I could yes. have like done a YouTube unboxing <laughs> video of, you know? This one will be fast, 1986 BBI Dream Girl USA. Um, they were another Sandy Flair type doll. 1986 Robotech. Um, which I will, I'm gonna call Robotech out on its shit right now. I saw an advertisement, I think it's the picture that we're gonna use to show people the Robotech doll. And it says, the world's first or the very first action fashion doll. And I'm gonna call them on their shit because those are lies. We had Charlie's Angels. We had, you know, I mean, come on. That they're, yeah. they, they didn't, they didn't reinvent, uh, you know, the wheel. It, it's <laughs> um, but they were larger, a little bit larger than Barbie. I think they were like 13 inches tall or something. 
and they're very they're very cool i love them yeah. um, they have really cool high heels they were really quality um i don't really remember the cartoon but i know it was going in the early 80s um and it's cute and then 87 were to maxi by hasbro and um i have a friend that hates this doll to every <laughs> inch of their being because the 1987 toy catalog showed the new year of gem none of that happened and we get maxi mm. um and there's a reason for it and the reason is is a whole bunch of toys got cut that year there was an oil shortage and there was a plat so the plastic factories all of that companies had to dial back and they had to have just very basic stuff that year. So that was the death of Jem and we got Maxi. So my friend hates Maxi because he's like, it was supposed to be Jem and instead it's yeah. that bit. You know? <laughs> but anyways, the same year we got Creata, did a line called Bobby Socks and another line called Prom Night and another line called Tiffany's Secret. The only one I remember is, as a kid is the Tiffany's Secret um, because the box art was gorgeous and I remember seeing them at Toys R Us and just being like, oh, that's so glamorous. Um, but uh, <laughs> they did another doll, which I think I might have skipped over, called Lace, which was a yes. copy of, she was a copy of Gem. And then in 87, we got Steffi Love. Yes. Um, so here's where so many people are going to hate me. <laughs> I I am fully aware now because I have friends that live in Europe and stuff that are like, oh, Steffi loves everything. And I grew up with Steffi Love and I love her. I thought she was like the worst clone of Barbie. Like I just thought she was just like not sculpted well. I didn't like I didn't like anything about her. And I still don't like Steffi. I've seen the new ones that they're still making. I still think that she's horrible. I don't like Steffi Love. Sorry. I have to agree. <laughs> I don't know. Like, she's so there's so much of her. And she's so 1987 Tonka gave us Aurora which was very much the same thing as Spectra. Uh, it was like a copy of Spectra, except for they had rhinestones in their eyes. And then Matchbox uh, in 87 gave us the real model. Um, Cheryl Teagues was one of the models. I don't remember which the other girls were, but they were actually a very quality fashion doll. Um, and they were based on real, real models. In 88, Hasbro brought us Cindy again. Interesting thing, I love her. I love Hasbro Cindy, um, but she is so Barbie. Everything that she did was Barbie. She copied every one of Barbie's moves in the US. She got this, her pants sued off of her by Mattel and she wasn't able to be made anymore. An interesting fact, the Popovi sisters who make the Popovi BJD doll, their like childhood doll that they were in love with was at Hasbro Cindy. And they always thought that she was Barbie. And then <sighs> later as, an, as adults, when they went to like recollect their childhood doll, they were like, wait a minute, that's not Barbie. It's this <laughs> other doll called Cindy that we had, you know? That that is what inspired the Popovi sisters. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm like, what an interesting, wow. you know, it's very cool. Anyway. 1989, Mattel gives us Jazzy, which was again, kind of Mattel's copy of Maxi. So Jazzy came around to try to knock uh, Maxi off the shelf and it worked. In 1989, we got LJN doing the Flojo doll. Not sure she was a celebrity of some type and she went by Flojo. Um, and so LJN, I guess, is known for doing celebrity dolls. Uh, Creata again gave us a line called signature um which were kind of like they actually weirdly enough they reminded me of that like um memphis 80s art like what medvani kind yes. of looks like they had these like black bobs and bright red lips you know and stuff and they also did the tulip doll which was from that tulip puff paint Oh, um, yes. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Very random. And then we get uh, Sweet Valley High, um, which I don't know if you are familiar with at all, oh. but in America, um, much like Nancy Drew um, in the 80s, uh, in the mid 80s, there was a book series called Sweet Valley High 
and um, it was really popular. And I remember like wanting to read them so bad, but I was afraid for someone to see me read this like girl book. 1989 Lenard um, yes. made this jet setters. They're taller than 16 inches. Yeah. They might be like, uh, I think they're like 18 inches, but they are gorgeous. Their faces are flawless. I think that their screening for the time was just beautiful, gorgeous quality hair. Um, the fashions were good. I like the size. The thing I did not like about them is I feel like their hands were really stubby. Um, in 1991, we get, we, as far as fashion doll history goes, he was kind of the creator of the indie fashion doll. I really scribbled on her pubes. Uh, no. Nope, I don't want to get into <laughs> any of no, that. No, none of that. La la la, rainbows. <laughs> I'm going to be Paula Abdul today. If I, were, if I were on an island and she was the only fashion doll on the island, I wouldn't play her. So what do these two stalker gay boys <sighs> do? We get into the phone book and we look up his mom. <laughs> I'm not going to see about the white one, to be honest. I I, actually, she's my favorite. Isn't that terrible? I just like because she. Uh, oh, so she was a big deal. She's still a big deal. Free Britney. We still love Britney. Yes. 